Have you ever stopped to think about the absolute magic trick sitting on your kitchen counter? You take a raw, pale potato, throw it into a plastic basket, push a button, and 15 minutes later, you have a golden, crispy, salty french fry. But here's the catch. There's no bubbling vat of hot oil. There's no grease splattering on your stove. For over a century, the laws of cooking were simple. If you wanted something crispy, you had to drown it in fat. That was the deal. But the air fryer broke that rule. So how does it do it? Is it just a tiny oven with a better marketing team? Or is there actual complex physics happening inside that plastic egg? And believe it or not, the technology behind your air fryer didn't start in a kitchen, it started in the sky during World War II. Today, we're uncovering the surprising history and science of the air fryer, right here in Simple Things Surprising Histories. To understand the air fryer, we have to go back to 1945. Meet William L. Maxson. He wasn't a chef, he was an inventor who had a very specific problem. He wanted to offer hot meals to soldiers and civilians flying on long-distance airplanes. In the 40s, heating up food on a plane was a nightmare. It was slow, uneven, and dangerous. Maxson invented a device called the Whirlwind Oven. It was a heavy 35-pound metal box made of aluminum and steel, powered by a 120-volt motor taken directly from an aircraft. His genius idea? Instead of just heating the box like a normal oven, he installed a powerful fan to force hot air over the food at high speeds. It could cook six frozen meals in half the time of a standard oven. It was revolutionary. He essentially invented the first air fryer 75 years ago. But he died shortly after, and his heavy, expensive whirlwind oven never made it into home kitchens. It was forgotten. The microwave took over the world instead, and for decades, if you wanted crispy food, you were stuck with the deep fryer. Fast forward to the Netherlands circa 2005. An inventor named Fred van der Wey was dealing with a personal crisis. He loved French fries, but he hated the cleanup and the smell of a deep fryer. He tried everything. He tried cooking fries in a convection oven, they dried out. He tried the microwave, they turned into a soggy mess. He realized that the problem wasn't the heat, it was the delivery of the heat. In a deep fryer, oil is the medium. Oil is thick and it hugs every single millimeter of the food, transferring heat instantly. Air is thin and terrible at holding heat. Van der Wey realized that if he wanted to mimic oil using only air, that air had to move violently fast. He spent three years in his garage developing a strange egg-shaped prototype. He engineered a specific starfish design at the bottom of the basket to create a mini tornado of heat. He showed it to a company called Philips in 2010. They called it Rapid Air Technology. It wasn't just an oven, it was a high-velocity wind tunnel for food. So, scientifically, what is happening inside that basket? How do you fry without oil? Well, technically, you aren't frying. You are baking with a turbo boost. When you deep fry a chicken wing, the hot oil dehydrates the surface of the skin so fast that it triggers something called the Maillard reaction. This is a chemical reaction between amino acids and reducing sugars that gives browned food its distinctive flavor and crunch. An air fryer cheats to get this result. It uses a heating element close to the food to blast it with radiation heat, while the giant fan above drives air downward. But here's the key. Because the basket is small, that hot air hits the bottom, bounces off that special starfish shape, and shoots back up. This creates a 360-degree heat storm. It strips away moisture from the surface of your food almost as fast as oil does. That intense evaporation creates the crisp. It tricks your tongue into thinking it's eating fried food, when really, it's eating super dehydrated roasted food. Of course, it's not magic. If you put a wet batter in there, it will just drip off. And for the best results, you usually still need a tiny teaspoon of oil to help conduct that heat. But the air fryer proved that you don't need a swimming pool of grease to get a good crunch. You just need physics, a little bit of wind, and a guy in the Netherlands who really wanted some better french fries. If you enjoyed this slice of history, go ahead and smash that like button. It helps the algorithm cook up more videos for you. And don't forget to subscribe to Simple Things Surprising Histories for more surprising stories behind everyday objects.
See you in the next one.